We both know what it's like to be hurt. We both know what it's like to feel good. I wanted to be a bit avant-garde with um, my location today. We're literally setting up in uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, so I wanted to wanted to show off. Show Very off nice. Very Live. nice. Yeah. So it makes cool. us a little jealous because you scheduled a tour for DC last year and then you never showed up. I'm just saying. <laughs> Man, join the club of, of disgruntled, <laughs> disgruntled people from last year. But we're making, this we're making I'm good not. on it, man. We're making good on it. All Aren't right. We? All right. So sure Blanca are. and I are getting ready to hop off of a 14-story building for uh, hey shit for Haiti to raise money for Haiti. I'm curious. You strike wow. me as kind of a daredevil, Joel. What's the most daredevil thing you've, you've done? <laughs> Start a band. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, pretty. Uh, no, your 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 bravery. sister actually started the band, huh? Touche. Touche. <laughs> now that 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 Jerry, you're, you're you're spot on. Um, you know, it's funny. I was talking with Ezra, our stage manager, this morning, and I was like, "Man, do you want to?" Because they hang this big kabuki behind us. It's sort of like packing a packing a a, a parachute. And yeah. I was like, "Did you ever, you know, ever do that?" Because I think I think I would do that. That's obviously where your your most daredevilish mindset goes to. But you know what's interesting, Jerry, is I am the most sort of devilish of most of my brothers, uh, or really of all of them. Thank you, Chico Hero. Um, but uh, they've all torn their ACLs and like meniscus in their legs. I'm the only one out of my five brothers, including my dad, who has not, I've broken my toe, I've done other silly things, but I've not, I've not torn my ACL. So, I think there's actually, you know, the law of inertia, like if you're throwing a punch, the one, you know, you're getting hit as hard as the one who receives the punch. It's just that you've got the inertia behind you. I think that's the way I approach life is like, <laughs> I'm just throwing the punch, you know, <laughs> so, um, sort of, you know, life is, is, has to receive it. Maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where are you hiding your brother? Where's Luke? Yeah. Oh, he's, um, I think he's tucked away in the back of the bus. He's okay. got his own list of work to do today. So we, we try and, you know, here and there divide and divide and conquer. So you got the king in for king. Oh, yeah. really? You just, you just became our favorite small bone brother today. Thank you. <laughs> I received that. Thank you. <laughs> um, how's he doing though? Cause we wanted to see, check up on him, see how he's doing yeah, with his vocal, vocal cords. cords. Yeah. Uh, much, much better. You know, um, I feel like I can say this joke now in good conscience that um, it was just really nice to have him not speak as much or as loudly for a period of time. <laughs> I was going to ask you, would you prefer then or now that he can speak? But I didn't know if that was appropriate. <laughs> Here's his lot in life, Blanca. He's he's one of we're we're two of seven kids, right? And he's number five in the order, and so. At that point, you just had to like speak up and speak out to let right. your voice be heard in the family. And so he just talks enormously loud all the time. Like he has no indoor voice. He has no outdoor voice. And so this has been a, you know, it's been a hard, a hard kind of path to journey. But I've been really proud of him to, to be candid in that he he's he's man. He's been so diligent. Vanderbilt in Nashville is one of the best, they have one of the best voice doctors and programs in the world. And um, so he was in great hands. He felt very safe. And um, it really, it, it, it kind of couldn't have gone better, which is just, it's just so, it's so wonderful. They, they, the surgery itself went really well. The procedure went well. He, he had vocal rest for five days. And then from that day to this, He's just gone kind of from from strength to strength. And so um, he's back, obviously, doing shows. We're back doing shows again. And uh, he's singing. We're putting the finishing touches on a new project. He's been singing on that again, which has been great. And so uh, we're, we're amidst all the things the world faces right now. We're, we're certainly counting our counting our blessings. Speaking of which, we've all had all the whole world has had a tough year and a half. Right. Almost two years now. And right. Uh, but I'm, I'm finding that a lot of us had that goal of coming out of this stronger, coming out of this better. I've been on a health journey myself, and right. I'm just wondering what happened in 2021 in your life that's made this year, 2021, better? Yeah. Um, 
you know, you have to tread lightly because 2020 was such a year of great loss for so many, you know. It's, it's interesting looking at our lifetime. I think we could all say this confidently that every other tragedy we've experienced has been either localized to maybe our family or to like New York City or a hurricane, you know, or the fires in Australia. But there's never been this moment in our lifetime where literally you sit down with almost any one of the 8 billion people on this planet and you say in their own language and their own tongue, how has the last year been for you? And every single one of them would have a story. Mm, mm. And I think there's actually that common suffering and that, that, that universal loss can actually lead to, uh, no pun intended, but to relating to each other in a whole new way because we have a shared experience, right? Um, so we're very mindful of that. But on a very, if you, if you shrink it down from like universal all the way to like a micro level for us, one of the great, I, I dare say, blessings uh, with absolute respect to what last year was. But when Luke got married in 2010 and I got married in 2012, the band was just beginning. And, and so really tied into our both of our respective marriages has been touring. And you just have this, it never would have happened otherwise, this sort of um, intermission, if you will, in our musical career of really special times um, with uncertain, obviously, but nonetheless, very special and bonding times with family. And so we've come into this new season of new music, being able to travel again. I think all of us feeling much more fortified and strong inside our families even spiritually uh, because of slowing down than we ever have. So I would, you know, I would say that would be the, that would take the cake as what was, again, on a very micro level, the, 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 the beauty of 2020, if you could put it that way. Mm -hmm. Is this song Relate kind of born out of that, that we can all relate to this global pandemic that's happened, or is it more than that? For sure. I mean, again, not to be sort of cliche, Jerry, but there's, we, we, the question of, okay, now we're all back, quote unquote, together, right? Uh, we did the thing. If we fall, we'll fall together. If we rise, we've risen and we're rising and, and we're back together. Um, but what do you do when you're actually back together? Hmm. Do you just tolerate each other? That doesn't seem to end well in the long run. Um, I think the question we're asking ourselves and, and kind of the listeners through this song and, and really with the backdrop, like you said, of 2020 and even 2021 is, you know, what if we're able to show compassion? What if we're able to show empathy for someone who looks and thinks and acts um, different from us? And could we actually use the tragedy of what this virus has been and this pandemic has been across the world as a launching pad or a springboard um, towards relating to each other. Because again, like we just spoke about, we have this common experience now um, that unite, can, can unite so many of us around the world. And so, yeah, I would, I, the short answer would be yes, absolutely. Relate in this whole project has been written around this idea of where do we go from here? It's kind of what you said, Blanca, you know, where, where, where do we, how we want to be better we want to be stronger how do we go to the future in the, in that regard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, i'm curious you guys see obviously thousands and thousands of people and there's some people you just click with like that and other people it's more of a struggle who is it harder for you to relate to joel is there anybody wow jerry that is that's a that's a good question um, it was meant for your brother, but since he's not here, we'll have to answer it. <laughs> yeah, why don't you just say no, I'm, ki I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, I think we would all say that it's hard to tolerate intolerable people. <laughs> Fair. Mm. You know? that's yep. That's like, you, you want, it's, good, it's a good sentiment. You want to be able to relate. But what do you do when actually the person that you're desperately trying to relate to says kind of to hell with you. Like, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Um, and that's where I think this whole, like, you know, love your enemies and, and, and pray for them. 
these sort of extravagant statements that Jesus Christ made come into play where you go, okay, no, no, no. Again, this is not about just tolerating you. This is about, man, if you're going to, if you're going to come at me aggressively, um, you're going to try and cancel me. Um, I'm not just going to, I'm just not going to be, I'm not going to plead the fifth or do, I'm going to actually lean in and go, man, I want to, I want to love you. And maybe through that, you know, loving the intolerable, you know, uh, maybe somewhere in there is what breaks this paradigm of, which was a very tribal thing of like tit for tat, you know, you, you killed my, you know, tribesman, I'm going to kill your tribesman. This, this whole idea of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If we can move beyond that, I think we could actually see real redemption, you know, under God in, in America and around the world. If we start turning that other cheek, which by the way, turning the other cheek is not a passive, <laughs> no, it's not, not a passive, you know, move. It's, it's a very deliberate, almost defiant move of like, I am not going to allow this to pull me into a place of bitterness or resentment or anger. I'm going to actually rise above it by the grace mm -hmm. of God. You know, one of my favorite lines in Relate is, but by the grace of God, we'll see each other's heart. Mm. Uh, it's yeah. just tucked away right at the end of the song. And I think that's it, Jerry. It's it, it, without the grace of God. You just you just make judgment calls on, you know, preconceived notions and the way someone looks or acts or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's the grace of God that will, will carry us through. I think. I think you guys are changing the world with your message. And the WGTS families, we're like cheerleaders for, mm -hmm. for King and Country. We love you guys. Okay. And I remember, I think it was early last year, I was at Five Below with my son. And I heard um, Burn the Ships at Five Below. And I thought, this is great. You know, people mm -hmm. outside of my Christian bubble are getting to hear this message. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. now what other doors have been opened for you? I feel like you have a wider audience now. Well, look, I think it's all of us. I, I, it's what you're doing, Blanca and Jerry, and you guys being in this and working for this for such a long time. This is, you know, even radio, it's never been to create a subculture, has it? It's always been to meet people in their homes, on their phones, in their cars, right where they are, as they're actually experiencing life. And the beauty of what we've been able to do in partnership with you, the beauty of, you know, streaming platforms and, and, and music in... 2021 is that it's finding its way um, in in into people's lives in just a different different way than it ever has and we're grateful for that and, and honestly Blanca I mean we should have another interview you know when the project's out and when we release and just to see where God continues to take it all because that's what's so exciting about this time is is you know the, the music can show up in the most peculiar places. And I love, I love that. I love that we were, we didn't engineer it this way, but that we started our musical journey as some of these divisive walls of, of kind of dividing up music were kind of breaking down, you know, and it was just received with the intent and the heart in which it was written and recorded. Mm -hmm. Well, when you guys are ready to debut it, you can come right here to Washington, D.C. We're ready for you. Maybe do something on the National Mall or something, you know. We'll That'd break it down so for cool. you. Man, we're just, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away, Jerry. We should, we'll just come over. I'll just hop over today quickly. And <laughs> love it. Sure, why love not? It, for it. lunch. <laughs> right. Well, we love you guys. Thank you so much for the time. Say hi to your brother. Say hi to your dad and anybody else we might know. Your family. Your family. We will. God we bless will. you guys. Thank Thanks, you guys. You're yeah. looking Thank great you. and looking well. Lovely to see your faces. You too. Have a good show.